let's talk about the progress in the struggle. Today I took a 5k run and that 5k run felt like I had lead for feet. It just, I always wasn't moving and it just felt difficult. Every step I took felt really, really difficult. If I measure this run, in the terms of all the runs and the progress that I made, like I'm, I'm doing worse off. But technically I'm not, because I actually ran faster, uh, 32 minutes. My fastest 5k in a long, long, long time, like in years. And so that's pretty good. That's to be celebrated. Even though my feet felt like late, maybe it's because I was moving faster than I'm used to. And because I've come off a long weekend and I had lots of cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe those are the reasons why my feet felt like lead. But that, uh, that progress in itself also shouldn't be um, measured on its own because if I look at all the other runs I've done, I've done some really, really difficult runs in some difficult places and it's, it's all been so much fun. I've, I mean, the, the 15k run that I did you know, a lot of that was the difficulty there was it was psychological. I was I didn't know the place, and it's fairly remote. But if you don't go out there for those opportunities, you never get you never get the experience. And so, you know, being able to do that, whereas before I probably would have chickened out, now I'm in a place where meeting that challenge felt really good. It's part of a broader challenge that I'm trying to do a 50-kilometer run you know, from Port Shepston to Calso along this old railway line that's, you know, not really in use anymore. In fact, on this 15K run, I, I did a little bit of running along the railway line to see what it was like. And man, it was tough. I can tell you that my it was really tough, but it was exciting. So I started off the year with a bit of walk about I then went on to uh, a bit of running a small challenge the 5k challenge I then went on to running up Table Mountain twice I then went on to setting myself a goal of running my first marathon ever with just 10 weeks of training or at least nine weeks of training <laughs> I then went on to running my first marathon trail run and then did lots of other little challenges in between and the, the, I've done a, a 10 kilometer twice a day for 10 days I did that twice but I never finished uh, the first time I did it I got to 74 kilometers the second time I did it I got to 95 kilometers uh, so both times will fail I'm getting ready to do that again to take it on for a third time um, and and through all of that, I've been having conversations with different people, putting up a sign, you know, that says, running saved your life, tell me how. It's really just, you know, for, for some of the, the conversations that I have had with, with Gavin and then with Spencer and just my own journey about just how I felt that running actually saved my life. And not just running, it's movement. It's whether you are walking, whether you are cycling or surfing, all of those things really add into the movement. The movement of not just sitting on the couch, watching TV, and then, you know, going to bed and then doing it all over the next day. And then getting caught up and say, oh, I'm busy with work, or I'm busy with my kids, or whatever excuse that we come up with that we think is okay, that we make that says that, yeah, like sitting on the couch is, is right, is the right thing to do. It's not. I mean, I, I, I think about all the things that I'd really like to do and some of the challenges that I want to take on. You know, like one of the things that I, I met this lady, Combi, and, and she was just a, such a beautiful person. You know, and in the conversation with her, I asked her what is the longest run, and she told me 10 kilometers. And when I thought about it, you know, over the next days and weeks after that conversation, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I should, uh, as one of the, the video sort of movies that I try to make, maybe I should reach out to Kombi and say, hey, let me help you run a 21 kilometer and then your first marathon. Let me help you get fit in running 21 kilometers and then taking it to a marathon. Now she has run a 21 kilometer, she told me that, but 
the when the more I thought about it, the more I thought like, but just just look at how happy she is. Look at how happy she is. What if trying to get her to run further distances makes her uncomfortable, makes her doubt her abilities, makes her look back and say, well, there's something, maybe there's something wrong with my running or my distance. And she's having a wonderful time and she runs often. She's a regular runner. You know, and I think about those kind of things is that, that we, we, we sometimes get caught up with chasing the next. You know, like I'm looking for the next adventure. Like every day is an adventure for me at the moment. And like if I only look at the day, the moment or the thing that happened, like I've missed the full adventure of this whole year. That's really the, you know, the progress in the struggle that I'm trying to, to share with you is that like don't just look at the one thing, the one event or, or compare yourself to someone else, which can often happen. It happens to me more than I'd like to admit. But it's, it doesn't matter. Like, Kombi is super happy with running 10Ks at least once a week on a Saturday. She runs a long run, which is 10Ks. Now, for me, a long run is different. It's, you know, and for her, she, she just, she's just so happy. Why would it, why do you want to try and say like, oh no, let's run 15Ks, 20Ks, and then she's not happy. That is, that would be a terrible thing. That for anyone is trying to like push them to do more. Like you got so much more in you. Like what if that is comfortable? You know, I think about my career, 28 years of being in IT, data analytics, you know, running a business, running two businesses, uh, doing a variety of things, learning how to make phones or how to edit video. I'm still trying to make a movie. You know, learning all these things. Like, yeah, it's not, I mean, they're not great. I admit it, my YouTube videos aren't great. My videos aren't great. But hopefully they, they resonate with someone. I mean, I do get messages. Some of them are public comments. A lot of them are private. Of people who say that they, they felt inspired. They, they really, the message challenged them, it hit home for them, and they now going to do something different in their lives. And, or maybe I can share some, some wisdom on how I, how I challenged another aspect of my life. For example, eating. My, my weight was out of control in 2017. I mean, these are two pictures. One is with my daughter and we're having a bit of fun. And the other one is later on in the year with a friend of mine. I mean, uh, that was my 2017. And so, to make the progress to where I am today, through small iterations, and feels, I mean, it feels really quick. Oh yeah, it's, it can be hard. Like today, it was hard. It shouldn't take away from the bigger picture of, of the things that you have achieved, of the things that you've, you're continuing to strive. Like, I showed up today. I showed up. That was good. That was good. That was damn good that I showed up. Man, it's cold. I'm sitting here in the shorts. So if you're struggling, you're feeling like you're not making any progress, no matter what you're trying, like it's hard, I understand, I'm with you and I support you in that it's hard. It's okay to have days where you say things are just hard. But I want to encourage you, no matter how hard it is, just to show up, even if you move one centimeter oh, in your journey, in your progress, and you feel like, that's not good enough. At least it's one centimeter. That one centimeter can make all the difference. So somebody else can look at you and say, wow, I was feeling really down. And if you could move one centimeter when you felt down, and I can move one centimeter. Then collectively, if we all move just that one centimeter and make that little bit of progress, just imagine how encouraging that can be for the communities we are in. If you resonate with this message or you feel like, you know, this is good enough for a like, I'd really appreciate it. It costs you nothing. All you have to do is hit that like button. And you feel like following more of my stories as I continue to share my progress and share the challenges that I'm taking on. They're not just running. Running is just a, it's just something that I'm using to tell these stories, to, to make progress in life, in 
in different ways. It's a, it's a way for me to meditate. It's a way for me to, to challenge myself, to challenge my own boundaries. It's not really about running. But if you want to share more of these stories or hear more of these stories, then please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And if you've watched a few of my videos before and, you, and you're still here watching some more, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much. So, so maybe you'll, you'll feel, feel like a plate and that you're not making any progress. I want to be here to encourage you to say that any progress you make, any movement you make is progress. Even if you don't make any movement, that in itself is progress because the change happens in your mind. Like that's the real change that's happening. Because you're never the same from one day to the next. So I hope you take some encouragement out of this and I hope that you resonate with this message and that you too can make some progress. And if you want to share any progress, any small progress or big progress that you've made, I'd love to hear about those in the comments. So for now, let me take on some of my other bigger challenges and face this day with comfort in knowing that Elisa came out today and I tried. My name is Richard and this has been Richard Talks.